go ahead and start recording. We'll see, give it a second or two. If there's any frame drops in the next 30 seconds or so, we'll go ahead and adjust settings. But if there isn't, then we'll go ahead and go as if it's uh, it's going to work and it's going to be perfectly fine, which it, it should be the case. So, um, yeah, without further ado, we'll go ahead and try or practice the first cast that I'll be doing. So welcome, guys, to the Overwatch tournament where you have the team of Hubris versus the team of Not Enigma. On the team of Not Enigma, we have Siegel, Oplade, Enigma himself, Har Blue, Mesra, Clockwork. Figure out what heroes they're going to be playing in a second here as they will be making a, a more conscious decision. The defense going to be Hubris in this case. They're uh, going to be picking their heroes and getting them out right now. We have a Zarya for Ross. The fair is going to be captained by Tailspin. We have Coolmat69 on the McCree. Reinhardt is Chump Minstrel picking up the Lucio. And finally, that leaves Esper on his famous Mercy. And it looks like the defense is going to be more set up on the heroes they want to do. We have Siegel going to be playing the Pharah. Opalade is picking up the Lucio. Winston going to be played by Enigma. Harblue playing the Mercy today. We have a Reinhardt for Mace Rar. And Clockwork going to be picking up the uh, Reaper. So again, this map is very hard at the beginning for the uh, defense to, to really set up a good choke. Uh, normally teams are going to fall back to that uh, first, not, not this bridge where the point is right here, but back to the right. As you can see what they're setting up right now, they're going to set up on that plateau using that double escape. They, it's hard to get flanked. It's hard for them to have any uh, uh, unknowing flanks because they can control the vision that comes out from under them. So. It's a very good position to hold, it's natural, uh, whereas you'll see other people holding up closer in, in uh, pu public matches. But here we go, as the match is going to be starting, Not Enigma moving on to the control point, stacking up very hard with five heroes on it. They have the Reinhardt and the Winston to create barrier. Seagull going to immediately go forward, trying to poke out, pushing with that concussive rocket. The defense is now out of position and going to have to fall back. And this allows, of course, the offense, Not Enigma, to go ahead and get in a better position for this overhang. Uh, the archway, as you call it. So here's Seagull going to be getting some rocket spam. That shield's taking quite a bit of damage. You can see it cracked. It's getting down to 1,000 or lower now, probably in the 500s, as it is going to fall. Firestrike comes out of the Reinhardt, and Seagull continues to do plenty of damage to them. And it looks like the Lucio was going to be able to get ta uh, taken out here. And that's going to make it harder for the offense to get in. But the Pharah here by Seagull getting a great flank, going to be able to do a lot of damage. Zarya getting tagged up big time. It looks like they're going to lose Cool Matt and Chump so far. And Siegel just definitely taking control of the match right here, able to flank around. But Tailspin shutting him down, and that's massive, given the defense some breathing room here, as that offense was definitely well coordinated and able to get a lot of time, pushing uh, halfway to the checkpoint here, getting pretty close. Clockwork on the Reaper now, we'll see him pushing up. They've created the space to be able to actually move in and get in there. He's going to flank around, finding McCree. The flashbang, though, fan the hammer. Quick on that Wraith form, though. That's going to save him and prevent him from dying. He's going to get topped off and uh, be able to get back on this payload. Is Not Enigma is back on it, pushing hard. They got the Winston barrier up. They're pushing with the Reinhardt and the Winston. High Noon coming out, though. Oh, it's going to get two, it looks like, as uh, we're going to lose both Chump and Ross. That High Noon coming out of uh, coming out of Cool Matt. Or, sorry, Cool Matt's High Noon, I apologize. Doing a lot of damage to the offense. and They're actually going to hold here, barely. But they are going to be able to hold the last meters of the uh, of the space left on the payload. So Not Enigma doesn't have a lot left to push here, of course. They only really need one good team fight to be able to get that last little bit. But that High Noon coming out of Cool Mat was able to do a lot of damage, getting, I believe it was two kills. And uh, the Resurrection, Harblue was one of the targets of that, so there was no res Resurrection. And that, of course, giving the Resurrection a faction. But, oh, the Wombo Combo, the Zarya, looks like it's going to hit on two different heroes. Doesn't end up doing as much as it looks like it could have. Three heroes do die from it, but there is a resurrection. And there we go, Harblue getting three more up. Three down on the defense, and Esper is up, but he doesn't have the resurrection. Sound barrier going on to the offense as Siegel is going to push in, doing quite a bit of damage to the Pharaoh once again. He's getting in there, doing a lot of harassment, and just getting a lot of direct rockets. The two Reinhardts swinging away, they got up front, and it looks like that is going to be the first checkpoint. So not Enigma doing a very, very good job grouping up there, working together, and Siegel, again, constantly flanking here and setting a tempo that it's very hard for Hubris to actually answer. They're, they're having to devote a lot of resources to specifically deal with Siegel, and Tailspin has been one of the only ones really able to stop him on, on, on uh, Tailspin's own Pharah. 
but we do have a flank here coming from Clockwork. This is definitely premeditated. He's looking to get right behind Ross in the defense. We do have a Diva coming out of Ross. It's definitely nothing, something you don't see as often as Enigma jumps in, gets the barrier down. It's going to fall off. They're going to go ahead and back off Tailspin, getting the high ground advantage over Seagull, but they're trading Rockets. The heal from Esper is going to keep them topped off, and it looks like actually Tailspin's getting pretty low. The ult from Seagull doing quite a bit of damage. So he's able to tag him up and force back Hubris, but again, Tailspin surviving at 20 HP, gets back up on this high ground and is able to have the advantage. Seagull trying to get that back as he boosts up, does quite a bit of damage to Tailspin, but there's always that uh, Esper on his back here. Tailspin is having a, a very easy time maintaining the advantage. He's got the damage boost now. They're now aware of Clockwork's flank as he doesn't look like he was able to get much there. Uh, he did get his ult up, doing quite a bit of damage, and now on the control point we have Winston dropping the barrier Moving all the way to the right side here as the fight's going on. Tailspin's going to use his ultimate, turning around. He doesn't get that much. He gets one and then goes down the sound barrier from the defense. It's just not working out, and it looks like that not Enigma is going to be able to push out here. They were able to flank around. It looks like Tailspin was in a very awkward position where he was almost surrounded by the entirety of not Enigma, and then his ultimate just got absolutely beat down. It wasn't actually that effective at all, and so now the second checkpoint's Gonna be in, uh, gonna be suspect here, and there's the sound barrier coming out onto the defense, or sorry, the offense. Looks like that Cole Matt wants to try to do something about this. He's fanning the hammer. He's on to Clockwork, but it's not enough. There's the high noon. He's got three in target, but the Reinhardt barrier at the right time stopping it. And now we have the Enigma on his primal rage with Winston. Gonna be able to jug juggle the McCree and take him down. And that might just do it. The Earth Shatter from Trump though, hitting three. It's giving quite a bit of room here. But again, not Enigma is always getting the, the advantage out of these fights. Every single time, Esper's ults aren't doing as much as Harbaloo's, it feels like, or that Esper is going down in less, less than advantageous positions. And they're able to capitalize every single time on the side of not Enigma. And uh, here we go again. Tailspin going to be asserting the aerial dominance, trying to get the, the highest degree of verticality so it's harder for not Enigma to take him out. Fire Strike, spam going at him. Lucio as well. It's just not enough right now. The payload is continuing to push in, and the momentum ha has not been stalled out really at all here by Hubris uh, in, in regards to not Enigma. They're just able to push when they want the charge going in. It looks like the Reinhardt doesn't get much out of it. He's going to get cornered off, sectioned off. Does go ahead and get hard blue, and it looks like they do lose the Pharah, Siegel, and they do lose the Lucio. Enigma going to be kind of isolated on the payload, and it looks like the first strong hold coming out of not, uh, Hubris here against Not Enigma as they were able to use the charge from Chump to be able to section off the heroes and get advantageous mini skirmishes and from those picks from those small fights were able to come back around but again there's four minutes left on the clock Not Enigma's had the precedence in this in this game the entire time the presumption they've had the pressure the advantage and Tailspin's been trying his hardest to keep Seagull down but it just doesn't seem like they've been able to do so Barrage sitting on C uh, on sorry on Tailspin Cool Matt with his high noon. They do have the Earth Shatter on there. Reinhardt, of course, Resurrections on both Mercies. And it does look like offense is going to be a little hard pressed with the ultimates right now. They do, of course, have the Death Blossom in regards to the damage. Enigma is just going to proc it. There's the high noon, followed up by the Sound Barrier. Looks like the high noon is not going to do that much. Offensive Sound Barrier as well as Seagull and Tailspin are taking it to the air and fighting it out for who's going to win the verticality. And it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. It's quite a wash as. The fight is just going everywhere. Seagull is going to be pushed back, and Tailspin does get the advantage over him, picking him off. And also, during that, Chump died, as well as Clockwork. So both teams are reeling in a little bit. The Resurrection does come out from the offense, and it's going to give them another chance to be able to get this point, it looks like. Although the uh, Death Blossom was canceled there in the apex of it. And the defense, once again, Ross, Tailspin, doing a great job, specifically Tailspin, controlling Seagull here. He's always winning these vertical wars and giving his team that advantage of not having to worry about looking up. Whereas, of course, Hubris, the entire, or not Enigma, the entire time is having to look up and worry about Tailspin and that, that presence that comes from that. So, looks like we have one or two really strong attempts left from not Enigma on the clock here. They'll probably group up, go for some poke, go for some harass, try to build up those ultimates because they're at a major deficit. Harblue doesn't have his resurrection. They do match the Earth Shatters, but Barrage and the uh, Graviton Surge are up, so the Wombo Combo is available to the defense. This next push is going to be really hard, and there it is! Graviton Surge followed up into not a Rocket Barrage. They're not going to use it. They're going to go ahead and get three, four kills from that. Not even needing the Rocket Barrage. What a great timing coming out of Ross on that Graviton Surge. And 
Again, it looks like for the first time in the game, Hubris has got their feet under them and are really putting it to the offense and, and holding this position. They do have a natural advantage compared to the earlier points in the map being closer to respawn. And they also can manipulate the positions a little bit more with the major choke points, the one on the right side and the one that you come in in the main bay, uh, bay doors. But outside of that, it really is just Hubris outplaying right now. And specifically, it feels like Tailspin is really on top of his game and able to shut down Seagull and forcing a D.Va change here as it'll be the second D.Va we've seen this match and now we have a Winston, Reinhardt and D.Va, triple tank, no Zarya for the offense themselves and High Noon is up for Cool Matt again, four ultimates up for the defense. Here it comes, he's going to be able to get four heroes in it but no, the Great Barrier is stopping any damage from that. They are, no, they are actually going to get four kills. It's absolutely disgusting defense coming out of the uh, side of Hubris here is that does get four kills followed up by the uh, Rocket Barrage. Uh, they didn't even need to use the Earth Shatter once again, and, and Hubris is really holding their own here. Not Enigma is trying to switch it up. They've, they've, they're changing up their comp a little bit here and there, but their offensive strategy is still the same. They're coming in from that main bay door, and it doesn't seem to be working because Hubris is able to manipulate them by shutting down that left side now of the map, or the right side if you're facing where the offense comes in. But here we go once again on the payload. Not Enigma gonna try to get this in. They only have 31 seconds. This will be the real last fight, last attempt. They have three ultimates up. Seagull's gonna go ahead and boost up. Cue the music. As the charge goes out for Mesfar, he's gonna be able to get down Chump. That's huge. Earth Shatter comes out though, getting another two kills. Tailspin down, Cool Mat down, but Esper does have that resurrection. Look for it. As four heroes now resurrected on the side of the defense, Hubris. Both sound barriers going out from each team, and now the fight goes again to Tailspin and Seagull. As Tailspin looks like, once again, he's able to just get the advantage, being able to stay higher up in the air. He's going to flank over here. There's the Graviton Surge coming out and the Rocket Barrage. And this looks like it's going to clean up any last offensive attempts. They do have the Diva Ultimate, but Tailspin doing a very good job of just ducking behind the payload and avoiding any damage from it. And that's going to be the first round, or first side, going to uh, the side of uh, Hubris. Great defense at the end. Again, they were not able to, to hold the early checkpoints very well at all. There's a lot of momentum, but this last one, this really sums it up. The Graviton Surge, perfect timing. Second one we saw in this last section of the, uh, of the map. And great follow-up. Queued together his team. And the synergy really showing out there in 16 high energy kills. 23 kill streak coming out of Tailspin. He really was dominating the air and giving his team that that comfort that they don't have to worry about the other Ferris. So the time to beat is 10 minutes and 8 seconds. Because of course, uh, this tournament will be using stopwatch, but that's more than enough time for uh, Enig uh, Hubris to try to penetrate the defenses of not Enigma. And again, this map is, like most uh, payload maps, tends to be offensively favored at this point in the game. So it's interesting to see that it really stalled out so hard there. Normally the defense will have a more uh, an advantage there, like... Like I said, you have that bay door as the primary entrance. You have that door to the right uh, that you can use to get into this, the, the side sections. And then if you have mobility heroes with verticality, of course, you can use that left side. So there is a, a trio of ways to go about it, but it seemed like Not Enigma was kind of stuck on using that, that major entrance to push in. And every single time, uh, Hubris was able to spread out and get the concave and just collapse on them and take them out. So it's... Uh, it's interesting to see that they didn't vary up the way that they went about the offense in that last section of the map. But again, the time set is 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 very easy to beat in all respects. But at the same time, if not Enigma can get that kind of hold that Hubris was able to in the last section, at any point it could really it could really put the uh, chances of not Enigma uh, Hubris pulling this game out to pretty slim. So we'll see how they go about it. We're going to see similar compositions again as Esper is going to be on the Mercy. Minstrel once again on the Lucio. Ross switching it up to the Diva as he did in the second section of the last map. But we'll see how it goes this time. Tailspin once again on the Farrah. Cool Matt on his McCree. And we have Chump on the Reinhardt for the defense. We have Clockwork picking up the McCree this time. Enigma on his Winston again. Seagull going to be championing the Farrah again. We have Harblue on the Mercy. Oakblade. Lucio and Mace Rar once again on that Reinhardt for that anchor of the defense, allowing Enigma to push out and play very aggressively as Winston. So we'll see how this game goes. We'll see how Hubris goes about their offense different than not Enigma. And if they can pull it out, again, 10 minutes is 
a beatable time, of course, but they have to actually complete the map before it, or they have to actually uh, not get stalled out at all. So we'll see how it goes. Again, the first defense on that plateau coming out from Not Enigma. They're going to start spamming out their abilities, using the payload as a natural wall. Here, Hubris is able to push up pretty safely. They didn't actually have the same kind of play where Siegel used his concussion to push back the defense and create that space. They just use the payload and strong positioning themselves to get there. But here we go into the archway. This is where the defense and the offense really clash for the first time. The defense does not want to give up this spot because there's only two major ways to them. Or they, there are three or four, but two major ways that are easy to access by the majority of the hero pool. And we see here Tailspin going to be going for the dominance of the air, but he gets below, unfortunately. Oh no, he does take out Siegel, getting below two well aimed rockets, but Clockwork quickly answers that, taking him down. And that'll make it decently hard for the offense to actually get the fight here but they do end up getting three heroes four heroes down on the uh, on the defensive side and not enigma taking a situation that looked potentially uncomfortable for them and uh absolutely dominating it as uh seagull got taken out uh they did lose tailspin right after that but they go ahead and take the point at a very quick time 647 is on the clock but of course they just need to get it to the last point and cap it before 10 minutes to actually win this game, or at any point before 10 minutes to win this game and win the match. So we'll see that once again, setting up here, using the verticality to their advantage, they're going to start raining down damage, trying to build up that ultimate at 85%. Tailspin, sorry, Esper, excuse me, Siegel really wants to get a good rocket barrage here. He's going to go ahead and flank around. He's going to be looking for the rocket barrage, going after Esper. He's getting shot up by Tailspin quite a bit. Oh, his ultimate gets canceled immediately. Both rocket barrages are immediately canceled in the offense. Gets completely wiped there. Great plays coming out of the uh, the, the side of Mesra, and it looked like Clockwork. They were able to manipulate the way that Tailspin wanted to use his ultimate and actually just take him out right away. And then from there, Esper fell, Minstrel, and then the rest of the team. So great defense coming out of Hubris. They're going to need a few more of these to act, or sorry, not Enigma to actually hold this map, ideally holding it before this control point. And now there goes the sound barrier, the Graviton Surge hitting on two in the left. The offense is already down five, though. The Graviton Surge ultimately doesn't matter if you lose so many heroes in that position. They got spread out, picked off, and unfortunately, Clockwork is just going off. Siegel's having a great game, and they're having a hard time controlling the verticality of this map, being able to actually threaten Siegel. A few times he has gone down, of course, but it's they've been hard-pressed to take him out consistently. And so we'll see how the offense... Goes about this here. They haven't at all used the right side of the map here again, limiting themselves to the center push. We'll see the McCree pushing and doing quite a bit of damage here. Going after the Mercy on the defense, and defense does get down. Uh, the, the offense of McCree and two are down. Chump just now respawning. They are on the payload. It's starting to move again, and they're starting to make some time. Primal Rage, Popeye, Enigma in the back line trying to zone and just create chaos. He's doing quite a bit of damage here. He's really spreading out the offense, making it hard for them to capitalize on this opportunity. And while they do have control of the, the, the payload, they're not actually pushing it right now. They're not actually getting too much time. Here we go. They do have three full ticks going now. The, the payload is back again moving, and we're get, approaching the hangar checkpoint here. Or sorry, not the hangar checkpoint, but the final checkpoint. And a high noon coming out of... Looks like uh, cool mat. It was canceled, and now that Graviton Surge... Once again, doing quite a bit of damage, but Harblue with the Resurrection, the Combo Breaker, stopping any attempts from the offense from running that fight outright, and now the fight's going to break back out with Clockwork going down pretty quickly, or sorry, Cool Map going down here, and looks like the defense is going to lose Seagull, Chump going to go down right after that, and a great charge coming out of Mesrar, zoning back the, def the offense and making it really hard for any offensive pressure to be made, but they do sneak through, they get three heroes on the... Payload are able to move it a little bit. Earth Shatter getting farmed up here by Mesrar. He's going to be able to hit three with it. And looks like that fight is going to be cleaned up pretty quickly. As, uh, again, this 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 defense is doing a pretty strong job. But the offense regrouping here. Tailspin getting that dominance in the air. Siegel going to be hunting down the Lucio. Trying to finish him off. But Siegel goes down himself. And that's going to be really a, a bad sign for the defense. As they lost two... Oh, no. Actually... They're able to turn around, Tailspin going down, Cool Mac going down, and once again, every single time they focus on Siegel, the offense, it seems that the defense is able to, to rally around Clockwork, 
and Enigma in his play and pick off the heroes that are chasing after Seagull. So really good job on them. Seagull being the anchor of the lineups that he tends to be on, a very strong star player, but his team is rallying around him and using him as a space creator and opportunity creator. And this is definitely looking like a very strong defensive hold. There's the sound barriers on both sides as the fight's going to go out. The Graviton Surge is hitting on four. Defense having a hard time. Seagull going to use his ultimate to try to zone back, but... Both resurrections, resetting the fight. We're back to the beginning. Only one ultimate remains on both teams as the Mercy is going to go down on the offense. Seagull going to be able to get two kills. Now three, four, five, and the offense is completely wiped. And once again, it looks like the defense here earlier on for not Enigma, but like Hubris, is able to stall the early momentum that the offense was able to get and just completely shut it down. Now four heroes on fire. Seagull, Harblue, Oplate, and Mesrar doing their best to keep this game alive, and Clockwork has his Deadeye Tailspin, has a barrage for the offense, but this is going to be a hard game to win. They only have two minutes remaining to even get to the second-to-last checkpoint here, and the charge coming out, it's actually going to hit and kill Cool Mad, as he's not going to be able to do anything, and now Chump falls down as well. Mace Rar does go down in the process, as the Zarya is doing quite a bit of damage at 30 charge, but this, this Winston, Enigma, doing such a good job pushing back, creating an opportunity for his team to follow up, and once again, another wipe on the offense, and there it is. Another push down, another minute 45 remaining, and Hubris, although they held at 10 minutes at an amazing, amazing stop of pressure, they're getting completely held here earlier on on the map, and they're looking to lose this match if they can't get together a good offense here, and they're going to go ahead and push up here as Tailspin pushes forward, boosting forward. He's got the shield. He's doing the barrage and doing quite a bit of damage, but... Clockwork with a great high noon. Three down on the defense. They don't have a resurrection. Offense is down three as well. Three on three. Down four now on the offense as Chump finally falls. Tailspin's going to be respawning. But Zarya with that 90 ch charge coming out from uh, Ross doing quite a bit of damage. Zoning the defense back. And uh, looks like he's going to be able to... No, he actually gets taken out by Seagull and Enigma. As he just doesn't have enough backup. Esper wasn't in the area. And now Hard Blue and Oplade both have their ultimates up with only one minute remaining. Hubris has to get their act together and has to be, have a strong push here to actually be able to take this map. They have another six minutes remaining, and there's the double sound barrier again. Again, we have both resurrections. We do have a Graviton Surge, but no follow-up from the defense. And right in the middle of the fight is Clockwork. The first Graviton, so the Graviton Surge is going to go up. The resurrection from the offense is going to bring up four. Unfortunately, Urshad are not doing that much. Neither did the Graviton Surge. And the high noon coming from Clockwork, picking up two on the defense. Cool Matt got up that Death Blossom. But Harblue still has the Resurrection, waiting to use it a good opportunity as the offense is scrambling to get their last push in. Seagull staying high in the map, controlling that verticality, raining down rockets from above. And there's the Resurrection, and Seagull, with the flanking barrage, takes out Cool Map before he can get the Death Blossom. No Resurrection on the field, and this looks like we might have the match as that play from Seagull absolutely shutting down the offense. They have three ultimates up on it, on the offense themselves, Hubris, but it might not be enough here. Absolute chaos here as the Earth Shatter does come down from Chump as he dies. Two down on the defense. Still two ultimates remain from the offense. They have four or three on the payload. And there goes the Death Blossom killing Enigma, Clockwork, and Oplade, and Mace Rar. Four heroes down on the offense. This might be the opportunity they needed to finally cap this point. But again, the clock is ticking down. They should only have a remaining about three minutes if my clock is correct. But they only have two minutes to score it anyways. So it's going to be come down to the question of if Hubris can hold in uh, overtime long or, or, or yeah, can uh, push it in in time or if they can just hold uh, overtime, not Enigma, long enough to prevent the cap or to just prevent the time from being beat in the first place. Two ultimates up on the defense, three ultimates up on the offense, so a slight advantage there as the offense pushes forward. The double diva they've switched to now getting up onto that high ground, but they're going to lose Tailspin before he's able to get off the barrage. That's one of their ultimates down now, four ultimates up on the defense as we're going to have a sound barrier going up on the offense. Je three, four, no, three down with three ultimates. Now four down on the offense. They're going to use the first diva ult as the self-destruct is going to go out. And no heroes die from that. The defense doing a very good job hiding behind obstacles, line of sighting it. And again, what here is that offense S stalled up, but only a minute remains. So there's definitely a lot of thought in the back of Hubris' head of we got to get there. We got to get on this point. We really have to move quickly. Otherwise, it's just going to be hard for us to ever actually mount that second offense. They really only have time for one good one and then a scrambled overtime 
offense for the second push. So here they go, moving to the right side, different than what Not Enigma did on their offense. They're actually going to be flanked here by Mace Rar as he's able to get in behind his charge. Gets canceled as he's able to be killed by the uh, uh, Reaper, by Cool Matt. And now we have... Uh, oh, High Noon from Clockwork going to be able to pick off... Looks like the, uh, the, 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 sorry, the Pharah. And there, this Resurrection Tailspin, and Chump going to be coming back up. That's the Resurrection they needed to make this offense work. And Esper going down critically before he's able to get the Resurrection. Self-Destruct Mech going out. Two down on the defense. Three, four down on the offense. This might be the hold that Not Enigma needed to win this map as they're approaching a very close time. The Resurrection from Har Blue is exactly what they needed. Their entire team is up. Mace Rar with the Earth Shatter. And the offense has no one in the area to be able to stop this game. And that's going to be the match. Hubris is able, was not able to take it, even with that 10 minute match time. Like I said, it is a beatable time, but if you can stall out that momentum, they did it earlier on in the map, which gave them a better opportunity in that last section, only two minutes remain. And wow, that was an insane match all the way down to the end. This Earth Shatter, absolutely disgusting coming out of Mace Rar as he was able to clean up the offense here. This is that stall that they needed to be able to win this section of the map and, or stall it out long enough, force it into overtime and make it that much harder for uh, uh, Hubris to actually capitalize on the 10 minute time that they made. So, it, it, what, a, what an absolutely amazing match coming out there. Barely winning, 24 seconds was the win time there. So thank you very much for watching guys, I appreciate this was my practice cast. I hope to be doing more of these in the future to get them out to you guys and to practice myself going into the launch of Overwatch. So thank you and have a nice day.